All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, happy to be speaking to an individual ahead of a big card here, BKFC7. It goes on August 10th, and in the main event, we have Jim Ehlers taking on Leonard Garcia, and I have Leonard on to offer some insights. How's your day going so far there, man? Hey, everything's going great, man. I'm excited. Uh, you know, we're a few days away or eight days away, and, and uh, things are looking good, weight's good, everything, so I, I feel primed up, ready to go. And I'm wondering how you feel after that fight with Julian Lane, because, I mean, that was just, you know, an incredible performance all around and getting, like, a pretty emphatic ending to that in the second frame there and, you know, coming out with some hardware as well. So what were your thoughts on just how the last fight went? I mean, couldn't have been a better, you know, welcome into the bare-knuckle world, I would think. It, it could have been if I wouldn't have got dropped in that first round. <laughs> uh, Julian, Julian definitely, uh, you know, he came out there and he showed uh, that, that he does have punch of power, um, which, hence, kind of um, brought me back down to my regular weight class uh, 155 145 is, is my home and uh, you know it just it was it was definitely a great performance I think I took some shots in there that I shouldn't have taken but you know it worked out really well and I showed my versatility and I showed what it takes to be a champion. Yeah, for sure. And I noticed towards the end of your career and just like a lot of fights, you know, throughout your MMA career, you're mostly at featherweight. But like you said, now at 155 pounds, do you see yourself kind of just like sticking within that 155 pound ranking? Or would you, I guess, want to like maybe go to like 145, depending on if the right fight is offered to you? Yeah, it's, I mean, right, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm not really worried about weight classes with the with the bare knuckle. It's not as much uh, um, emphasis as it was in MMA. Um, getting down for me now at, 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 at my age is a lot easier because I'm more um, I'm more disciplined, more focused. Um, and, you know, life, life isn't as crazy as it used to be when I was an MMA fighter. So um, I feel like 155 is easy. I was 160 this morning. Uh, we're eight days away. So, um, you know, I'm eating what I want to. I'm doing what I want. Uh, I could make 45 if, if the right, um, you know, challenge presented itself. Uh, but, you know, right now I'm looking to uh, – capture the uh, 155 title and uh you know that that's my goal yeah, and it seemed like a conversation with Keith Jardine was like a big factor in you transitioning from your retirement in MMA back to bare knuckle fighting. I understand he was a little wary of even fighting you bare knuckle. Like, listen, I'm 230, and like I wouldn't want to be fighting you in that kind of situation. Was that kind of the moment that you were like, oh hey, I'll give this BKFC thing a try and see how it goes? You know, man, Keith is a great friend of mine. We've known each other for a lot of years. For for Keith to say something like that really did do a number on my confidence. You know, Keith Keith was a guy who. I mean, he beat Chuck Liddell, and uh, for him to say that and be serious about it, you know, he was like, seriously, I would not fight you bare knuckle. I just wouldn't do it. I, I mean, it's, it's like I'm watching you train, and I just I, I wouldn't do it. So, uh, you know, it, it, it definitely helped my confidence a lot, and, and it definitely it made it way easier. You know, I, I've always said whenever I was an MMA fighter, why do we wear gloves? Like, why? Why? We should just not wear gloves. And uh, now I got the opportunity to do it with no wrestling, no takedowns. It's even better. Yeah, for sure. And I saw like at the beginning of your run with uh, you know BKFC, you signed about a three fight deal there. Are you looking to re sign and kind of keep going? Or are you looking to fight out the contract and kind of see how you're feeling at that juncture? Like, what's your status in that regard? Yeah, you know, right now I think I think uh, I think I'm set up uh, uh, pretty pretty well. I think. Um, I think that if I play my cards right, I can negotiate, you know, a good deal for myself. At the end of the day, you know, fighters want want the best for themselves. They want the best for their family. And um, I think if um, if I can put myself in a title situation in my last fight, that makes things a lot better for me. Um, of course, Dave Feldman is a very smart man. I'm sure he sees where I'm trying to head with this. Um, I'm sure there'll be some negotiation going on, but I don't I don't see myself going anywhere. I feel um, I feel 100 percent. Uh, you know, physical, everything, everything that's going on right now is really good. Like, this is one of the best training camps that I've had. I feel, you know, I'm, I'm just excited to get out there and show everybody what I've been working on. And, um, you know, I'll sit and talk with Dave um, before this one, and, um, you know, we'll, we'll figure that out. But absolutely, I don't feel like I'm going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah, because I was noticing that some outlets are reporting that this, you know, August 10th fight against Jim Ehlers is a 155-pound title eliminator. So, could be setting yourself up pretty pretty, you know, maybe getting like a little bit of hardware in BKFC. Absolutely. If I can, you know, if I can, uh, um, you know, set this up. And, of course, you know, Jim is 
Jim is in my crosshairs right now. He's the only thing I'm thinking about. If I start thinking about titles or anything else past him, um, you know, there's always a danger of that. Um, he he possesses lots of uh, challenges for me, and uh, you know, he's he's just what I'm thinking about right now. So I think as a fighter and as a you know a martial artist, I think think of the task at hand, get through him, and then we can talk about. Uh, what we're planning on doing next. But, yeah, title eliminator sounds about right. And uh, it sounds like if, you know, I get through this one, you know, the, the way we're planning on doing it, um, it looks like uh, Artem Lobov would be the next guy. And uh, that could possibly be for the title. And I was actually going to ask you about that. I see dollar signs all over that fight and just a fight that could also really lend itself well to being super exciting, but just, you know, hyper-focused on this fight here. And to that point, I'm kind of curious if you've gotten a chance to check out some tape on your opponent or if you have any kind of read on their skill set or you're just going to kind of focus on like what you're doing in there and just your preparations and just sort of see what goes with what's kind of like a short notice kind of replacement in a relative sense. You know, anytime that you get a change in opponent, it definitely... It's different, you know. You, you're 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 focused on a person. You're thinking about that person, and then you know the short notice guy comes in and he kind of takes it on a whim, and he you know really kind of understands what he's getting himself into because he accepted the fight. But um, you know, at, at at this moment, I think um, in bare knuckle, there's there's not a lot of stuff that you can really change. You know, there there's not. I mean, if you're fighting a Poly and an Art of Low Bob, of course. That's two different guys, you know, two different styles. Um, what I seen at a gym was, uh, you know, he's an aggressive guy. He likes some mall guys. He likes to come forward. Um, that, that plays right into my wheelhouse. So I, I felt like, um, you know, it's not gonna, it wasn't that big of a change. But, yeah, you know, I, I've, I've been looking at everybody. I've been looking at Artem. I watched his last fight. Uh, of course, I have been watching Jason Knight's fight quite a bit. And, uh, you know, the 45 seconds that I've seen of Jim, he looked good. You know, he went out there and he did what he, what he was supposed to do. Um, you know, the good thing is, is, is uh, you know, people always look good against other people. Let's see how we look against each other. And presumably that Jason Knight fight is about that you would want in the future because he was initially the opponent for BKFC 7, but, you know, had the rib injury and everything like that. So is that about that maybe you would want down the line at some point? Maybe, you know, first title defense potentially. Who knows, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know exactly how to work out. I think um, I know uh, Jim has a has a loss to him. Um, I think if if uh, like I said, if I get through this one uh, the way we plan on doing it, um, I think it'll set up a good fight for him and Jim to uh, to see how they do against each other, and uh, you know me and Artem see how we do against each other, and then that sets up you know possibly either a rematch with me and Jim or or, or a new match with with me and Jason I mean at this point in time uh, we you know the, the the cards aren't all on the table we don't know yet so all I know is Artem is 2-0 and I'm looking to go 2-0 and uh, that 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 would be the, the smartest fight for me yeah for sure I would say so but in terms of when you're actually in the ring and competing and everything like that as compared, you know, between your runs in MMA and BKB, I imagine there's a lot of differences, like economy of punches, just being, you know, more careful with your shot selection and everything like that. From your position, what's the biggest key difference between your striking methods in MMA versus what you do in bare knuckle boxing? So I think uh, MMA guys do a lot better than boxing guys for a number of reasons. Um, of course, I brought in um, three world champion boxers uh, to help me get ready. Uh, Brian Vera, he's a former IBO world champion. Uh, Genya Enriquez, who's my head coach, he's a current WBC world champion. And then uh, Alejandro Martinez, who is also a uh, he, he was a Muay Thai champion. I, I apologize, not not a boxing champion. But I brought all these guys in to see the different styles of fighting. You know, um, I did in my last camp. Of course, um, we spent a lot of time at the ranch, and 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 we focused on. Um, just getting into shape after so many years off, um, we really didn't have time to polish everything up. Um, we just kind of knew we were going to get in there and we are going to get after it. We did work some stuff, but, you know, this camp I really focused on the bare knuckle aspect of things. I studied the reason that the guys used to put their fists up in the air and that, you know, the different angles that they used to throw their, their punches in. And, um, you know, this, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish guy, he's kind of the, the, uh, the bare knuckle uh, I would call it a mascot. Um, 
you know, they used to hold their hands like that to remind themselves uh, mentally. You want to hit underneath, you know, the softer parts of the body. The, the you know, the the, the 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 you know parts of the body that aren't going to hurt your hand right away. So, um, you know, when when you study that, and of course, you know, you get out there and you just start chunking punches, and it's hard to uh, to keep yourself composed, but. Um, there's so much to it, man. I think bare knuckle is, at the end of the day, it is boxing. If if you really, you know, boil down to it, you really look at it, dissect it. It's boxing, but it is it, it's a different style. It, it's it's uh, uh, smaller footwork, um, smaller head movements. Just everything is like micromanaged in bare knuckle because of the the dangers of the broken hand. The dangers of, of how hard you're swinging when you're hitting somebody in the top of the head, um, you know, all, all these different things that that are that come into play. You have to be really precise. You got to be really accurate, and that's something that um, I feel like we've worked on, and we're going to capitalize on it. Yeah, absolutely. And then you have like the shorter round durations in bare knuckle boxing as well. So, I mean, I'm kind of wondering, does that lend itself better to your stocks? You're always that like forward going action fighter kind of thing. Or have you had to kind of change your methodology in terms of like the cardio training and everything like that? Absolutely not, man. I'm a, I'm a guy who goes, you know, everybody knows that I, I, I get out there and I get after it. And, uh, you know, two, two minute rounds, I said, you know, just like me and Julian did, we went out there and we put on a show. Um, to me, this sport is you get out there and you get out there and, and you toe the line with the other guy. You give him everything you got. He's going to give you everything you've got. He's got. And who's standing at the end is the winner. I mean, I think that's why Bare Knuckle is going to blow up. I think that's why it's already blowing up because there's a definite answer at, after every fight. Um, even the last one was a little controversial with Artem and, and, and Polly. Uh, boxers thought Polly won the fight. Uh, MMA guys thought Artem won the fight. I feel like if you have seen the damage and you seen what really went on in that fight, um, you know Polly did throw enough punches. He wasn't offensive enough, and um, I think offense is a great defense. And and uh, I always go out there and I always try to give as much offense as I can because if I'm giving it, it's not you're not taking it. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And we were talking about, you know, certain MMA guys coming over and, you know, doing better in bare knuckle boxing. I was noticing in one of the releases that came out, you were kind of talking about wanting to potentially fight Diego Sanchez in bare knuckle boxing. Are there any other MMA fighters presently out there that intrigue you in terms of like, oh, it'd be cool if they came over to bare knuckle boxing. It'd be cool if I got to toe the line with them at some point. Man, I think... Man, there's 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 a list of guys out there that that I think could do really well on bare knuckle. Um, I think, um, of course, Diego's always going to be intriguing matchup. He he's hit nuts, so it'd be great. Um, I, I you know I, I don't know uh, uh, you know I, I I'm a huge fan of the Diaz brothers. Um, I think that this sport was made for a guy like Nate Diaz. Uh, you know, and, and if if uh, if Nate was a guy who ever came out, that's a scary, scary matchup for anybody. I mean, it would it would it's almost it's one of those that you you cringe about thinking about. And uh, if you want to fight a guy and you want to call yourself the best, you got to fight the best. And I think that would be one that would uh, definitely uh, bring a lot of interest to the table, and it would bring a lot of you know a, a lot of training, a lot of hard work out of me. Uh, to try to get ready for something like that. Yeah, absolutely, man. And seeing the domestic rise of bare knuckle fighting has definitely been intriguing from my perspective as like a media person covering it and everything like that. But you know, you've been really great with your time, man. I'm curious if there's anything you want to add as a parting thought as we're wrapping up here. Man, I just you know let everybody know, man. That, you know, this is the uh, the best Leonard Garcia you guys are going to see because you know physically, mentally, spiritually, everything, man. You know, and just take time. Thank God allowing you guys to come on and, and, and do this interview with me and take the time to, to, to get my story out there. I appreciate you guys. Well, I really appreciate the time, man, and people are really going to be excited for this BKFC 7 fight, Ehlers vs. Garcia. And people can check that out on August 10th, live and free on YouTube. It has potential title implications as far as setting up that next number one contender. And yeah, I just really appreciate all the time. Leonard, best of luck in the rest of your preparations, and have a great rest of your day, too. Awesome. Thank you, sir.